here. Um, we are going to be timing and giving you a warning at one minute. We've got a, quite a sophisticated uh, device here, um, which, uh, <laughs> which Susie's going to manage and come down and man that. She's really looking forward to this. I mean, she's been telling me about this barrel um, quite a while now. So. So she's going to ring that at 60 seconds. There she is. And then... Yeah, yeah. Um, don't... When the power rings at uh, 60 seconds, I mean, don't panic. You don't have to stop straight on the dot, but just start thinking about, you know, wrapping it up. Um, okay. Or you going hard. Um, I won't be mean. Cool, that's it. Hello, my name's Marjorie, I'm 72, and I look after booking at the church hall. Uh, I've got an iPad which I use to talk to the grandkids. And what was I going to say next? Oh yeah, so Help Marjorie is booking as a service, a website plugin and an app, designed to help people who hire small spaces like church halls, function rooms, things like that. Uh, I could do with business people, I could do with designers, and I could do with some developers. And that's Help Marjorie. Thank you. number three and this is the uh, Guerrilla Network. I was on the underground recently and I noticed that instead of reading the newspaper everyone's now just goggling infectiously at their phones. Um, as soon as you pull out the station there's not even any internet. So the Guerrilla Network is going to provide a freely available Wi-Fi network that we pop up in any location where there's no internet. So that could be on a, a ship, on a tube train, and we'd initially seed it by paying people to sit on the tube, same tube train every day and look at a little device which will seed it and eventually it'll become an app <coughs> self-sustaining. We'll have commercial content which will replace the content of the Metro newspaper or the Evening Standard and we'll have user-created content as well. So uh, it's going to use existing technology and that's it, Guerrilla Network, number three. to help them remember their daily routine and prescribed tasks with simple and friendly problems. Unique selling points of, it, of existing solutions are automatic notifications to family, carers and medical staff as appropriate when tasks have been missed. An essential management console for medical professionals to monitor their patients and intervene early if they spot any causes of concern. Initially, we'll make a mobile and tablet app and offer it for free to gain adoption while selling the central management console or direct access to the underlying API to local authorities, social services, 
and public or private health professional services and centres such as GP surgeries or um, care homes. I'm Frank, I'm a software developer and software and graphic designer with several apps under my belt and Canvas website, looking for a team with a domain expert um, to help design, build and sell this. Number four. Hello, good evening, my name is Hugh Sayer, I'm a marketing consultant, I'm a business writer. Uh, the idea today um, is nothing like the one I picked this morning on Slack, so sorry to disappoint you, it's not potholes. Um, if anyone's been paying attention, we have a refugee crisis in Europe. Lots of people are running for their lives, they leave their countries with any of their clothes on their back. The aid agencies, the charities put out appeals for clothes and people send clothes. But the problem is, Stop taking a photograph for a minute. Tim. Tim is a refugee. He asked for a jacket. Come here, Tim. <laughs> um, don't try to put it on, actually. <laughs> it's going to be a squeeze. The jacket is going to fit Tim. It's not personal. So a lot of clothes go to waste. There's a lot of transport problems. I'll take a photo of that. Uh, there's logistics problems. And there's a lot of wasted time and effort trying to fit clothes for people. Uh, just don't care. So they get kids clothes for adults and vice versa. So what we want to try and build is some way of directing donated clothes that are specific to individuals. Uh, I would need business development people, I would need developers, website people, anyone who knows anything about the charity, service sector. Um, find a way of delivering personalised clothes to individual refugees. That's the way. Thank you. Number five. I'm Rob. Um, I am a technology buyer and I've well, steered with lots of software vendors, some of whom are nice, some of whom I'm not. Um, some of the ones who aren't like to change their terms and conditions on a regular basis and have major financial impacts for the uh, customers, um, particularly if they uh, get audited and some of them have made things like virtualisation, uh, not quite like their license in terms of the price, cost uh, companies billions of pounds. Uh, what I would like to do is develop a web app that um, monitors changes on terms and conditions on websites and sends out notifications to subscribers uh, to let them know what changes they can make. Um, and I would be coders and developers and designers and if there's a way to do that, I'd like to launch a Number yourself on the interactive map of the area that you're interested in uh, with accurate and up-to-date information about street crime, uh, what happens around the corner from your potential new home, uh, local amenities like uh, supermarkets, parks, comments and ratings about them, 
uh, ratings of schools and nurseries, nurseries in, in the area. Uh, infrastructural things like uh, how close the transport is, transport is to a uh, subway or uh, metro, etc. Internet speed, which company is the fastest. Uh, mobile networks, which one is the better. Uh, and also opinions for people living in this area. Uh, we want to be able to compare these uh, factors from area to area and also create a livability index from 0 to 10. Well, as you may know, this information is available publicly, but what we want to do is to make it uh, in one place so you don't have to go into 10 different places. So, simple as that, by the people for the people. Thank you. I am Ken uh, My uh, staff from like when you apply for a job, uh, this is very really hard to like employer can see like what you write about you, and it's very really hard like how you can like know about the employer. So I want to build a system where you can uh, like uh, complain about the company looking for a job or have a communication with, between the other employee, and the com company can like give you reference give you achievement, skills, everything in just one system, so make it simple. Like I get off or read or like LinkedIn, everything like that. It's like you write by yourself, but like company don't know if it's the truth or not. So I want to be able to that system, like everything in one. Thank you. I'm Ken, I'm an Hi, I'm Ken, I'm my name is Pierre. I'm a third year student at UEA in Norwich Business School. Uh, over the three years at UEA, I realized that there was a lot of technology involved and uh, nothing was actually treating the problem of attendance or participation. So I came up with this idea to build an app that will allow everyone owning the phone, so pretty much every, every student, to use their phone as a micro connected to, to the computer that will basically monitor it on the other side. And basically, a lot of people, everyone in the room, to actually speak up out loud without having to show anything. And the other bit will be for the attendance, where you will find some QR code, for example, on the lecture slides, that will allow you to scan the actual uh, QR code that will, and which will match with your geolocation, and then allow you to actually prove that you were here at the right time to show your attendance. This can be obviously spread to other applications in different presentations, not only in the university. So for this, I would, need, I would need the help of two developers, one who is specialized in servers, and another one who is a designer. Thank you very much. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Danny West. Uh, I'm a student at UEA, and I come from a background working in the restaurant industry. My mom owns a restaurant, and I currently work for one in Norwich. And uh, we all have a problem, and it's TripAdvisor. We really don't like it in the industry. We think it's toxic, <laughs> and we think it's literally crippling our trade. So my solution to this is an app that I want to develop, and it's called Menulicious. And it takes the people out of the restaurant industry, which sounds bad, but it will work. So instead of having people's reviews for you to go off the restaurant, um, what it would be is you literally just see the restaurant's menu, and that's it. So basically, it lets the food of the restaurant do the talking. Um, I've got a domain name purchase for it, I've got a trademark, and I've also done research to see that there is a gap in the market for this, and that there is a need for it. I think it's a highly profitable application, and I need some skilled developers and some designers to come together and to make this happen. So, thank you. Number 11. Hello, uh, my name is Salim. I'm a third year student. And third year at uh, UEA, uh, number 12, as I already said. Okay, I think one of the most important things we gain from the, whether it's a like high school, uni, or our previous work experience is connections. It's the people you get to know. So the idea that I had in mind is that why not create an application on your phone? that will enable you, like, for example, if I decided to go to Paris next week, or to like, uh, Singapore, any place, um, this application will uh, enable me to see like, who my Facebook friends is at the city at that moment. You know? Why not? Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, 
I've had him in third year, Mark King's junior number 13. Uh, being in my third year, I have led them up uh, to two student houses. Uh, the main problem with student houses is that they don't have a lot of items, such as TVs, coffee tables, tumble drive, etc. We'd like to be an online service that allows you to rent these items for your duration of time at uni, and then you send it back. So you'll be able to have these items while you need them, and then get rid of them, and we'll deliver the products. Uh, what I'm looking for is someone to help us create a website and create the people who are able to get behind the idea. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jack, and I'm a third year business student at UGA, and I'm in the team. So the problem I aim to solve is for young people, particularly between the age of 16 and 25, who are in relationships or might find someone they like and who they want to take on a date. There are two main issues which I've found personally from growing up in London. You don't have a lot of money and you don't know where to go, but you want to impress the girl or the guy that you're with. Now my solution is to create a website or an app and target at these young people um, to give them ideas of new places to go and also offer discounts for them. Um, I aim to incorporate a lot of small local businesses that you find down the side streets that you don't typically find um, easily on Google. Um, so they can use it for search tool as well, such as location if they want to find someone to go within 10 miles and select a budget range. Um, I'm looking for tech people and business people and great to work and just want everyone to have fun really. So please stick on to the Hi everyone, I'm John. Um, my idea would be about Building a really, uh, I think there could be a bit really better card system in the UK because uh, first question do you get so pleased when you try to get on the bus? Seeing so many people uh, waiting for five of the bus tickets and waiting for changes because I, I do. And I would like, I think there could be a card that they get the value inside so every time it will take two seconds so that we can do the transaction just. No plug-in, no swipe payment, no password. We can just add like 50 pounds to the card so that we, every time you, we could use it to the, to the McDonald's, Starbucks, or trains or bus, every time we just place it uh, on the screen and do it. And another one would go, uh, go on. So it would be really helpful to the shops to reduce the time and for both shops and anything like me, you'll hit the major news sites, you'll look for breaking news, you search Twitter for relevant updates, visit Reddit, maybe there'll be a Reddit Live, um, but it's probably moderated by someone with the username Catworlds or something. Um, to end up with 15 open tabs, a lot of spammy duplicate information, uh, a bunch of unpopulated posts on Facebook from people with no real knowledge of what's going on. You miss things, but you rely too heavily on one biased source. So what if we could crowdsource narratives around events as they unfold? So imagine a single place to go to see a coherent narrative of key events built by the crowd, verified by citations, community <coughs> sources and social media, as they're published. Gradually, we build a timeline of what's happening, false information is validity, and duplication is removed. The end result is a timeline of events with all of the news and context, more angles, and potentially across all the political spectrum. Um, we like some uh, helpful people who know about ways to monetize content and things like that, um, potentially links to business. Number 16, see you. Hi, uh, I'm Nigel. I'm a designer. I'm also an academic at the uh, University of the Arts. Um, the prior problem we have is with registration students. Uh, writing up uh, their, well, registering in for a session and keeping attendance, monitoring to help them, support them. So I think that there's a need for an app 
actions in the Rochester's part of an action process, which is to help register, you know, uh, track events, time, and through where the students are. It could be, as I say, it's as the technology and as possible. Um, looking for marketers, ideas for persons to assist, um, and other persons who be interested in doing Hi guys, I'm Dan, I'm very team. Uh, in my day job, I'm a growth hacker at Axon Byte, and uh, quite a lot of what I do has been mentioned already tonight. It's about prototyping and police typing, going out and speak to people on the street. And I want to realise this uh, in Norwich. I want to turn Norwich into the prototype city. And the only way we can do that is by getting together small businesses, small tech businesses, any kind of businesses in Norwich, and early adopters in Norwich. Uh, people are always really keen to talk to us and try out new products. Uh, the problem is after this and getting these people together and getting to hear it to community uh, to then pitch more ideas. So I want to build a really simple web app which just shows, um, which lets any small business in Norwich, tech or otherwise, to pitch their new ideas and products and maybe a new cake, a new recipe or a new app that they're releasing. And then let's uh, the people of Norwich, us, everyone else, people who would like to get ahead of the trend, people who like to try something new, to then go onto that web app vote for the best one. It's kind of like a product hunt, but just for now. Cheers. Hi, my name is Ross Cooper, number 19. I'm a doctor in the NHS. Um, could everyone please stay seated with your eyes open if you or anyone you know has been treated by the NHS. That's basically everyone on the so essentially the NHS is a huge deficit at the moment, there's a danger of collapse, I don't know if everyone's aware of that. So we need to save some money. Currently it spends 3% of its annual budget on uh, temporary staff. And we want to find a way to reduce that cost. So our website will essentially reduce the middleman and cut it out entirely, cut out agency staff and reduce the staffing costs. To do this, we need a developer who can code and build a website, and we need a front-end designer who's knowledgeable in UX. In the time it's taken me to do this pitch, the NHS has spent £6,278 on temporary staff. Please help save our NHS. Hello, I was the guy who went to the toilets in uh, after the picture. So. <laughs> uh, I think that in today's digital times, a real estate agent is no longer necessary. Uh, we have all went to the house and we know how frustrating the whole process can be. Uh, no one really likes estate agents. Uh, there's a growing trend of people uh, renting their properties privately without the need for an agent. Uh, still, there's no easy way to do that, um, it, and it actually goes against the big models of Right Move, uh, Zoopla, and even the new guys, uh, uh, Purple Wings. Uh, my idea is to do uh, to the real estate agencies what uh, Airbnb did to the hotel industry. So, essentially, a platform where you can easily rent your house privately with a few clicks of uh, your mouse or a few touches of your finger. Um, so, if you want to work on a truly disruptive app on a New innovative way, I would need uh, two app developers, front end guy, as you see in JavaScript, back end guy, is uh, C sharp, no Python, uh, business people which have experience on lettings, and uh, very importantly, graphic designers. So please join me, I'm number 20. Thank you. Hello, everyone, um, I'm Michael, and I love to cook, but I'm not very good at it. So I spend a lot of time looking for recipes on the internet, trying to find things that I'm interested in right now. Inevitably, I don't have something on the ingredients so it looks too complicated. I give up and just make macaroni and cheese. So what I want to do is I want to make a kind of a digital system, a chef basically, that I can have in my pocket that can help me out. So I can ask it questions like, I'm looking for a really healthy meal for two people using chicken and lime, for example. And it will go away and search the internet for me and find recipes. Um, bring them back to me. 
And maybe those recipes have things that I don't like, like pineapple. So I can say, I don't like pineapple. No problem, it goes away and looks for other recipes, or it suggests something different instead. Um, maybe something that I do like, and it remembers things that I don't like. So it's all about making cooking more intuitive, making it less hassle, and making it more fun overall. So I'm looking for people who are passionate about food, like I am. I'm looking for people who can help me with a lot of the, the backend coding. I'm looking for designers as well, and I need someone to help me figure out how to make money, because I don't know how to make money yet. So business people would be great. Thank you. Hi friends, uh, my name is uh, Michael Everett and I'd like to introduce to you a powerful new platform that I'd like to call Zap. Um, so the internet thing is on its way, it's here, but it's really not quite here. And uh, it's a huge problem not being connected to our thing, things around us, like the light bulbs, the heating, the, uh, all, of, all of your everyday items. This is a huge problem. I mean, a quick story that uh, I had my bike stolen when I was a little kid, a, little, uh, a bike that I made, it was like my pride and joy, and it got stolen, and because I wasn't connected to it, I couldn't see it, it was gone forever. And this is the same, this is the same with every day, everyday life with tons of things, like who, who's had a, a bike stolen uh, here, right? A lot, most of us. Who's had an argument about leaving the lights on? Right? Who's had an argument about leaving the heating on? Right? So the unit of things is huge, and uh, a lot of companies are betting big on this. And so that is really a smart bridge uh, connection that allows you to connect to all of the different internet things, devices. But instead of uh, this 2D sort of experience that we're all stuck in here, uh, I want to lift it out into a 3D experience and see the things around us so we can actually lift the phone up and see the light bulb in a, in, through the camera for a real experience in the room. So I can see the light bulb, I can touch it, or I can see you know, the people in my life through the Facebook. Right? Instead of this 2D experience, I can see that Mark is 3.2 miles away. I can see that Sarah is 1.1 mile away. Or I can see that the light bulb is 10 meters away. And I can just see it effortlessly, like that, and, and, and touch it, touch it up. So, um, uh, where are we? <laughs> so what I'd like to do to demonstrate this new platform is create a super sexy minimum viable product app that can connect to these smart bulbs, okay, and perhaps a few other uh, internet things like if, you, if there's any hardware guys in the room then come and see me we can maybe play with some other ideas as well. Uh, the people I need, I'm going to need, uh, like I say, some hardware guys. <laughs> I'm saying, you know what, who I need? Hardware guys, a user experience, a couple of uh, mobile app developers uh, and maybe a couple of business guys as well. Um, so uh, that's me, I am number 22, so if you could do a huge uh, favour for me and put your kidney wings on number 22 and vote for this one, that would be great. Thank you very much. Thank you, you again, 23. I can't leave potholes alone. Potholes, horrible for the next year. Works for drivers, damage your car, damage your bike. Um, had an idea that we'd have an app, take photographs, load it up on the website. Turns out that's been thought of, called Fix My Street, that's very nice. So how do we develop that idea? One idea, have something in a car or on a motorbike that actually tracks the road surface in real time. Every bump, every bounce, every crack, every bend. Loads that data up, access and sold to insurance companies so they can see the state of the road and what damages the car. Maybe linked with a camera as well so you get photographic evidence. Maybe sold to councils so they can see when road surfaces are deteriorating. Because before the potholes form, you get bends, you get twists, you get subsidence. They could then take remedial action before it becomes expensive. So something in cars to track the road surface in real time it would help with traffic flow, it would help prevent accidents. Uh, and I need anyone who knows anything about how to do something like that. So <laughs> developers, tech people, people who can build things, people who know about photographs, because I'm only a marketing person, so I only know about ideas and communication, but not about actually how to build it. So, uh, number 23, Q. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so last minute pitch, but here we go. It's cool, let's do laundry. In general, raise your hands. Okay, that's a weird guy, but... 
who's been in college and has done laundry and enjoyed the experience? <laughs> no one, right? Okay, so I'm, this is my second year in the UK and I've experienced that it's possible <coughs> to do laundry. You go to the laundry and there's people staring at you, watching the next machine, is it free, is it for me? There's people leaving their clothes all over and you're waiting for them to come back so you can do your laundry. So I thought, would it be an easier way if a student could book their appointment for the laundry and see if it's available, if their laundry room is free, so you say, oh, I'll go do my laundry on Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday is busy, so I won't go. Why bother going, staying there for three hours, waiting for a machine to be free? Instead, if you can make a booking and create a virtual queue where you know who's next, and if the machine is free, or if someone missed the booking, it automatically sets free and you can use it. So it's basically make our life easier. I'm a developer slash marketing savvy. So I want people to understand our issue and put some creativity, some technical experience and solve this problem because it's a common problem in circuit group which is involving most of the universities in the UK has not solved this problem so I see this as a business opportunity that we could sell to them and make us happy. Thank you very much, I'm number 24. <laughs>